Hello, my name is Gloria, and I'm here to speak on behalf of my beloved mother, Osmara, known to all that knew her as Osi. My mother had a slight fall on January 14th. Nothing, thank goodness, had come of that. She was able to move around. She lived independently, and she was able to move around her home, cook her meals, take her baths, and um, do her laundry and everything that she did on a day-to-day -day basis. However, come January 24th, 10 days later, all of a sudden she got a pain. She kept saying she felt some discomfort on her backside. Now, I'm not a doctor, she's not a doctor, so the place to take her to was the ER. The pain started about 10 o'clock that morning on January 24th, only 10 days after her fall. Having said that, when the ambulance came to pick her up at home, um, they asked, what is going on, ma'am? She was coherent. She was able to give them the date. Um, her vitals were all on point. Um, the fire department that um, actually took her to the hospital happens to be across the street from our home and has been since my mom built her home there in that area in 1976. So we've had a very good rapport with the fire department. They were there quickly to take her. Um, she got to the hospital and the only thing that was told to the emergency crew, I mean, the emergency crew, yeah, in the ER was that she had had a fall. So they turned over, I've got the full report from the paramedics, everything that was done and ministered during her whole transport to the hospital. At the hospital, um, they were told again that she had had a fall. So their first um, interest was to go ahead and do a CT scan and some x-rays because of the pain being in her back area. Having said that, about two hours later, my mother is still screaming in pain, intensifying as the minutes go on. And all of a sudden, the doctor comes in. He goes, guess what? Your CT scan looks good. You're going home. She goes, what do you mean I'm going home? I'm in severe pain and worse pain than when I was brought in. He says, well, there's nothing wrong with you. Everything's good. We're going to send you home with some pain medication. At that point, I spoke up and I said, my mother's not going anywhere. My mother needs to be, um, you know, determine what is going on. She is still in pain. Well, we're going to go ahead and give her some pain medication here and see how, you know, it eases before we let her go home. They wanted to administer uh, Norco and I refused. So since I refused, that was easier for them to just put on the charts, patient refused. So they went ahead and administered a 300 milligram Tylenol pill. Another hour later, she's still in pain and they're like, ma'am, we cannot keep you. You came in here for a pain. There is nothing wrong. The CT can came back clear. So you will be going home now. I asked to speak to a, um, the emergency uh, supervisor, department supervisor, so they can go ahead and admit her. After three more hours, they went ahead and admitted her, put her up on the sixth floor. At that point, my mother was already screaming in so much pain that I believe they just wanted to shut her up. Still, nothing had been found on her, but they were going to go ahead and admit her because we wanted her to be admitted. At that point, they continued to administer um, hard drugs. At this point, once you get on the floor, they no longer take the charts from the emergency room. Now they're doing their own thing. On the sixth floor, there was one nurse for six patients. She was given hard drugs every four hours. And by the next day, she was in a comatose stage because she was so incoherent from so much drugs in her body. They started administering her um, spasm pills, um, baclofen, and it's like, well, why are you giving her spasm pills if she's not even having spasms? She was in pain. Having said that, uh, my mother laid there, unable to verbalize anything or even scream in pain anymore, not even eating or being hydrated. And after 72 hours, I said, something has got to be done. My mother is just falling, dwindling away in front of my eyes. What is going on? Now they decided to do another x-ray, but they had to do it the next day because her blood pressure started dropping. They determined she had something in her lungs, some kind of fluid. At that point, her blood pressure had dropped so low. And by the next day, when they were gonna to try to attempt to try to remove whatever fluid they thought she may have had in her lungs, she had already contracted septus. Um, from there, she just started going downhill. Her kidneys failed. And needless to say, my mother, all of this ordeal began on January 24th and 11 days later on February 4th, by this time she was already in the intensive care unit and my mother was given to me deceased. Um, they went ahead and said that it was from natural causes, but that she did go into septic shock. 
her kidneys. Lovely when she fell on the tent. And that went all undetermined and unnoticed and not found. And they were going to send her home that very evening of the 24th of January. Nobody was held accountable because it was just out of their hands and it's just a natural cause death. And my mother was only 74 years old. And like I said, independent, lived alone. And she, I do not believe it was time for her to go. So I am with all of you in making these doctors responsible for their actions so that it doesn't happen to anybody else. Thank you.